Thank you everybody so much for being here uh, again. So glad that uh, you guys made time to come and join us. And thank you all so much for enjoying the food. My mother-in-law, Barbara, did it again. Um, that's one of my favorite things in the whole world is uh, her daughter learned how to cook like her. So I win. Anyways, um, so tonight's uh, dinner is sponsored by Jason and Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys want to say anything when we see it? You want to step up? Come on. Spotlight. I, I didn't prepare for all this this evening. We could have been working on this exact Okay. What do you want me to talk about? I don't know what you did. So. so, several years ago, we got it into our heads that we liked the idea of being landlords, doing buy and hold investing. Um, over the, course of several years. There's a bunch of other people in here that have followed us on that path or started it with us. Um, I managed to quit my job do this full time. And uh, a second business that we've decided to do more of is uh, loan money on other people's projects. So if you have projects that you need funding for, do call. Yes. So make sure uh, if you guys have any questions on these, you connected. Uh, we're going to be doing a deal of two or three or ten yeah. Yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Can. That's right. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Emily has something to say. Dr. Emily. The most important part is he's rewarding himself with a race car. So oh. if anybody knows of any race cars that he can buy in the market. Yes, nice. What type of race car? Um, I'm looking more for a small, affordable thing like a Miata. Preferably a 99 or 2000, but any of the years under $15,000 with a Torsen diff. All those words I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not a car guy. So, hey, Facebook Live, yeah. we need a car for this dude, okay? <laughs> and yes. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Emily, thank you for calling out on that. Oh, uh, yeah. So, guys, this is my wife, Megan, and she's going to introduce uh, some friends of ours. Uh, and she has a passion for nonprofits, so we're going to introduce, she's going to introduce our friends. There you go. Um, I want y'all to come up. This is uh, Deborah and Gabriel, and they founded um, New Legacy International. And we would like them to kind of let you guys know what they're doing um, and their action steps for this year moving forward. Thank you for coming. Speak loud. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, we're so excited to be here. Um, so many new faces that we don't know, and just thank you, Megan and Roger, for inviting us. Um, they've been really good friends to us. And we're here, this is, I'm Deborah, this is my husband, Gabriel, and we have our two daughters here. So this is our youngest, Noah. Gabriel and I met um, in 2009. I was doing mission work in Sierra Leone, and he was living there. And although we come from completely different backgrounds, we just found that we have some of them, obviously core values, but then we have a passion for the people of Sierra Leone. And we have a heart to see the Sierra Leone country developed and the people of Sierra Leone to reach their full potential. And so um, we connected on that and began working in Sierra Leone, helping people in Sierra Leone. And then um, we ended up getting married. We came to the US. We've actually been in Oklahoma working and living for the last several years. We've got our two daughters now. But we've been struggling just on our own to give back and help as much as we can. But for the vision that God has in our hearts, um, we launched New Legacy so that we could have a wider reaching and longer impact in Sierra Leone. And so the mission of the New Legacy is over the decade that we've been serving in Sierra Leone, doing missions, um, he has been on the receiving and giving end of a lot of support in Sierra Leone. We have it in our heart to see a new legacy of health. Um, something beyond short-term trips, something beyond um, just aid and charity relief, but to see the people of Sierra Leone like, invest in them. Um, it's called kind of business of the mission of reaching into the community and um, starting small businesses that we can invest in them and support them, that we can bring the resources and training we have um, and bring in experts to equip them. <coughs> but then the people of Sierra Leone, um, they can step out of poverty by having real jobs, working and providing for their families. And so the vision of that is that then they will be able to pay their own school fees for their children. They'll be able to pay for their medical bills and the community will really flourish and grow. So our plan is we are actually going, um, 
first missionaries and moving to Sierra Leone under New Legacy in March of next year. That's the target date. And we're going to take our girls um, and we're just moving so that we can be there and set that vision in motion. And Gabriel will be overseeing the businesses and connecting with people. He has so many relationships already there. So we'll be doing that. The two businesses we'll be starting with is um, a transportation. There's like a private trans need for private transportation um, with small businesses, but for the public. And um, that's something that if we can get a vehicle that works well and runs well over there, um, you need a startup where we can quickly train um, some of the locals to run it and oversee that and hopefully hand that off to them and let them develop and grow with that business. And then super neat connection with um, the Godwins is that we were sharing that and Gabriel and were talking. And so Gabriel actually just got back and I was going to share something. He just got back from Sierra Leone a couple weeks ago and for, for the trip, um, talking with Roger about like business ideas and we've got the transformation for in the city, but the rural community is able to a very small um, impoverished like, village and he has a heart to like see those people flourish and how can we um, connect with them just supporting them where they're at and so um, Roger shared with him a friend um, we've gone to Moses and so they need to have to be able to go to Sierra Leone because um, Moses is doing that in his country in Uganda he is creating business and developing through agriculture opportunities um, with people in Uganda so can you share some of that? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm Gabriel. Um, so yeah, um, grew up in a small village in Sierra Leone. Um, after the blow down of war, I was able to go to an orphanage. I grew up there. That's when Deborah came in 2009 as a missionary, and we were working together, going back to the villages. And I was, I was working with her in a team and being a translator, like tell the people because they don't speak English, so. I have to translate what she's saying. So we've been working on that, so we just felt the burden that we need to go back and help these people, because since the time I came here in America, we've been helping people on our own, and it's just hard to help people, you know, develop. So we feel like being there is the best, and while we're there, we'll be able to help and bring in as experts to help them. So what we are doing is now to start an agriculture. Because I went back to my village and I asked the people, how can we help you guys? And they said, we want food. You know, we have been doing farming our whole life, you know, but it's getting hard. We don't have the equipment and stuff, but we know how to do farming. So we want to go back and support them doing the food, you know. Um, Sierra Leone, mostly everybody like eat rice every day, you know, morning, afternoon, and evening. So rice is very important there. So we want to like do agriculture and grow rice and also do sell part of it on the side and just have these people that pay for their kids to go to school and just be responsible for their family and stuff. So that's the goal. Um, I went back um, about three weeks ago to Sierra Leone to just build the fence where my family will be because it's really hard when you're coming from America, everybody thinks you have a lot. So you're going to have to have that, you know, private place for your family. So we're still doing that and we're still in the process to put things together to move there in March. And just um, something to share also as we've been what we're excited about is us maybe will be a huge transition for our family, but um, partly with Gabriel, we don't have a lot of the barriers that normally Americans would have moving cross-culturally. Um, there's not like the language barriers, um, the cultural understanding, the building the relationships, and so once we can move, we're going to be able to really start immediately growing the businesses and just the work can kind of push forward very quickly, so we're excited about that. and. Um, so again, Moses was great. We're going to really continue to work with him. Roger's been helping us connect with people. Um, also, I just wanted to share, along with like our family moving forward, is New Legacy is really small. Um, we're growing, but because it's so small, the work we're doing, um, when people partner to support us, um, there's not this overhead cost. It's not going different places. Like the money that was given for this last trip or the money that will help these businesses, that support really just goes directly to them. 
Like, it's just our family going, and we are able to just invest all the resources to the people that really, really need it. And so that's what we're excited about being able to do while we're in Sierra Leone. And so we have left. Um, we want to connect with you guys because there's mostly everyone here we don't know. So we've left some business cards and a little, like, prayer cards for our family. And that has, like, our website, which is newlegacyinternational.org. Um, so you can follow along. Like, we have a Facebook page also that's private, so you can just request to join that. And that has like updates of the wall he built or his trips. And so it's just a little bit more personal way you can follow along. But that's a little bit about us. And we're so I'm excited to hear from you. And thank you for listening. And we're all excited to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Handmade bricks to build their walls. So it was pretty intense. So just Think about that. Like I, I told him, like, man, ours are like 18 inches. Like, we're good. <laughs> so it was really, really impressive. So learning about a lot of that stuff. And I have a heart and a passion for Africa. I've been to Kenya, and, uh, and I'm going to end up going to Sierra Leone and Cameroon and a couple other countries as well. But it was just a really amazing thing that we were able to get Moses because that's what it, he started with $2,000 and has created an entire industry inside Western Uganda. So money goes a lot farther. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, but with the Oklahoma Food Bank, 90% of every dollar goes to food. So the overhead is extremely low. And that's one of the reasons why I support and love them, because their mission is to support, and that's where it goes. There's not a large overhead. So, but we're also here for Miss Athena. So come on up. So I got to meet Athena and Jerry at uh, sailing training, and we were all going through some sales training together. And uh, you have a daughter, Savannah, and just an amazing story, and just the encouragement she gives to people and to you guys just to push through and be powerful in what you guys can accomplish for her. Um, so it's just love that you guys came. And uh, productive like a boss, because she's a time blocking master. So I know a lot of us struggle. So that's why you're here. All right. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's good to see some things. COVID, this extroverted person did not love COVID. So I'm so excited to be here. So obviously, how many of you will be honest with me right now and say that you have had an experience at the end of the week and you wondered, what did I do all week? Right? Or you've had an experience where you're like, my to-do list is two pages long and I have no idea how I'm going to get it done, and you become emotionally in quicksand. Okay? Well, you're not alone. Okay? Everyone. I now, I'm a partner in a home building business, and I own a coaching business. I also, my husband and I helped found a nonprofit a number of years ago, and I'm on the board of, of another nonprofit. I get you, right? And as I talk to my coaching clients, Every single one of them struggle with believing they can accomplish what they can accomplish. Now, I'm going to take what I typically teach, the overview in an hour, and I'm going to condense it for you guys and just give you some very high-level tips, some things I want you to take away from tonight. And I will be sending Roger and his beautiful wife this so they can get it out to everybody in their network, okay? But really what I want to start with saying is if you want to take control back of your life, the number one thing you have to do is you have to believe it can be done. That's the first step. If you do not believe that you have the power to actually control the minutes of your life, you've already failed. Okay? The other piece is you have to understand you were put here for a purpose and a plan. And every time you say yes, to something that doesn't fit your purpose and plan, you are saying no to your purpose and plan. You have to start understanding that you are making a deal with your life. This isn't about just time management. This is about your life impact. This is about accomplishing what you were put here for. This is about what are you doing to put food on your table? What are you doing to better yourself or your community? That's what we're talking about. And so you have to understand that first. And if you can understand that first, then hopefully, given some tools, you'll have the motivation to overcome 
that self-doubt that we all have that we can't do it. I will tell you just on a personal note, just last week this happened to me again. I had to call my handsome husband and have him shake me out of it. I hear consistently what you want to achieve can't be done. Can't be done. You don't have enough minutes. Someone last week told me, somebody I care about, that not my daughter is 16, she's severe profound, so she's in diapers, non-mobile, uh, non-verbal, but will rock your world, I'll tell you that. She is a couple of years away from not having a place to belong. And 90% of families in our situation put their child in an institution. Because I can't be a partner in a business, run a national that will become an international business, be a bestseller, be a national speaker, run nonprofits, and be a mom to a child like that. But I'm going to tell you that there's nothing that separates me from you. Tonight, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it. And if you don't believe me, follow me. I will. And I will because I'm focused. So the first thing I have to understand is why am I here? Why do I care? And my why is that my daughter, we are going to prove to those 90% of families who don't think it can be done that it can be done. Right? So that's the why. And you got to have that first. But now I want to talk about something practical because it happens to all of us, me too. We have this thing, and it's a psychology law. You can look it up. It's called Parkinson's Law. Anybody hear that thing? Okay, look it up. It's a powerful law. Parkinson's Law, I'm going to dummy it down for you because I like to keep it simple. <laughs> Parkinson's Law basically says, whatever time frame you give your brain to do a task is how long it's going to take. So if you do not give your brain time frames, your brain doesn't know it has to achieve that in that amount of time. And this is the problem, is we too often don't give ourselves these deadlines. We don't force ourselves to work in units of time to tell our brain, hey brain, in this amount of time, this is what I need you to do. So essentially, time blocking, dummy down, is segments of time in your calendar where you determine your focus. Okay, that's all it is. And you're using Parkinson's law to give your brain a front and end to a task. Now I'm gonna tell you something. If you do this, you're going to be surprised how smart you are. You're gonna be surprised how talented you are and how creative you are. When my business partner, Tim Turner, and I started really implementing this, he and I, and if you know him, he's an engineer and very dry. But he and I would come into each other's office and be like, you are not going to believe what I just did in 90 minutes. And I'm like, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's because we focused. We applied Parkinson's law. Now, if you take my classes or anything like that, you'll know you have to do it distraction free and you have to stay focused. But let me give you some other practical things. One of the other pitfalls that I see people with managing their time, and please, if you're doing something else, really listen to this if you're on Zoom or online. You must know your priorities. If you do not know your priorities, then how do you time block? And what I mean by priorities is, what are those things that if you do not do in a week, the relationships that matter to most of you will degrade. That if you do not do, that your purpose will not move forward. That if you do not do, then your business could fail. If you do not know what those things are, if you listen to nothing else I say today, go out and figure that out tomorrow. And don't, I, I know Angelina is here, there are people out there, Roger, there are people out there that write yours down and go to them for their leadership to make sure you got it, okay? 
It's so important when you write out your priorities, get wisdom. Make sure they're the right ones. And make sure that you know what they are. Now I will tell you, and I tell my coaching clients this, you know, have your top 10 things that have to get put into time sections in your week. But how many of you in 2020 were pushed beyond your abilities? Who were pushed beyond juggling so many things you thought, how am I going to do it? Well, I will tell you, so 2020, my daughter was home full time. So was my father and our adult daughter. And I still have two companies to run. So I I'm like, okay, you teach this class, you better figure this out. You can't let this get you. So here's something I learned from 2020. You need to know your five top priorities in your life. One of those five top things that if life is throwing you a curveball, and my curveballs, by the way, are kind of like what happened in February, which is when my daughter's in the hospital, and I don't know if she's going to make it. I'm talking about those types of curveballs. When life throws you those curveballs, what are the five things that still have to happen? What are they? And this is what you do with those five things. You put those in your calendar. You put those time blocks in that calendar. And you can move them like Tetris, but you can't delete them. You hear me? You can move them, but you don't delete them. You say, no matter what, these five things will happen, no matter how I feel, no matter what life is happening, because this is what will move me forward and teach me how to walk through a storm. Now, what's important is you know what those are, and that you're ready to engage that type of focus. Those of you who follow me in my prospecting page, you'll know, even when my daughter is in the hospital, what do I do? Stephanie, every morning anyway. Post I post personally from a hospital room. Why do I do that? Why is that one of my five? Because serving is healing. And I know it. So I know to serve is one of my top five because it will help me have the energy to keep going. So you need to know what your top five are. And then, remember, we're going to move them, but we're not going to delete them. And that means you're going to have to make an emotional handshake with yourself that says, when I can't do my top ten and I've got to focus on the top five, what am I willing to give up? And I suggest you do this when you're not in an emotional situation. But what is it? Now, I already don't watch a lot of TV and stuff, but there are other things that I enjoy that I know during that kind of chaos it's gonna have to, I'm going to have to give it up. The other thing, and I want you to think about this, is we've got our top priorities, right? So our mind is right, we believe we can, we know our why, and we have our priorities. What's next? What's next is you need to understand realistically how long each task is going to take, and then you need to put it in your calendar during your, what I call your energy time. That time you have energy. You also have to be realistic. I have clients that come to me and are so proud of their calendars and it's just full. I'm not impressed. That just means you're not prioritized, okay? So what you need is you have to make sure that you have blocks of time where you are planning for chaos, right? Any, everybody in here owns a business or whatever, you got some chaos sometimes, those uncontrollable things. So you need to be realistic about when you put your time blocks in there and put them in a time and allow yourself that freedom of flexibility. The other thing that I see people do they try to start to, um, we, we don't own businesses because we all are underachievers, right? So what we do is we try to overachieve, and by overachieving, welcome sir, by overachieving, 
what we do is we try to fill it up too much. That doesn't work. In any new behavior, you must start what? Small. So start out with just your five. Get those in there. And if you know my platform, I'm going to tell you, please make sure that you have prospecting for your business in there. Okay? So make sure that you have your tie, your five in there, and you start small. Because what I want you to do, because this, your psyche needs you to achieve. Your psyche needs you to be able to say, I did it today. I did it. I, I blocked it out, and I achieved it, and I did it. And you need to celebrate that. So that your brain says, let's do that again. Let's do that again. And so it's very important you start small. You also need to make sure that you're revising it and looking at it. Did that work? Did that not work? And understand that it's fluid learning. And depending on what you're doing, make sure that you're tracking that you're getting the best ROI on those time blocking behaviors. And I heard Roger, somebody say, Roger loves this. But the other thing you have to understand is you need to embrace the strength to say no. Okay? You have to be able to say no to the things that don't fit in alignment with your purpose, your plan, your mission, your business. And then if you're struggling with saying no, I suggest you do a little journal thought process and ask yourself, what emotionally are you getting from that yes that's maybe not the best way to get that emotional need met? Right? Because we say yes for a reason. So we need to uncover that so that we embrace the power to say no. So what are we doing, right? We're going to have the mindset. We're going to believe we can. We're going to know our why. We're going to know our priorities. We're going to make sure that those top five are done no matter what happens. And we're going to plan our calendars. And we're going to start small. We're going to celebrate every win. And then what's going to happen is you will start to see the productivity increase. Ten years ago, I was a uh, direct sales and marketing director for an international company. And I had my daughter. That's all I did. And I was stressed. Today, you just heard all I do. I do literally 10 times more than I did then. And by the way, now I'm actually in a healthy, loving marriage that I actually want to spend time with my husband additional to that. So I have an enormous push on my time, yet I have the time. And the only thing that's separating me from you or any of us is just the implementation of this tool. It's just a tool. But it's a huge, powerful tool that allows you to take your life back. And for you to wake up tomorrow and say, what impact did I make? And am I on the right track? Good luck, you guys. I hope you're in it with me. Questions? Yes, Q&A. Sure. Who's got questions? Yeah. Describe your planning for chaos. So my planning for chaos is understanding my five priorities. So I shrink it down to what are the five things I have to get done. And then I make sure if any, yeah. So the five priorities, is that your entire life, or do you have like that split up between like writing your book, you mentioned your business, your family? It is, so my business is my business, so it's the five priorities, so if my business, and it's businesses, so when I say my five for my businesses, it's multiple businesses, speaking, everything, and then I have my priorities for my family. So there's separate five? Yep, okay. yep, yep, they're separate, yep, so because I just, but here's the thing, when you have, and most of us do, when you have multiple businesses or projects, you can very quickly get so bogged down that you forget what are the things that actually keep it all moving. And you can usually shrink that down. 
Same thing with your relationship. I mean, frankly, you can, you can look at any relationship in your life and really say, okay, what is it that has to happen on a weekly basis that this keeps this nurtured and good and, and, and pull it down? We, we try to do too many things. So, other questions? Experience with putting this towards a child that gets distracted easily? I do not have experience with that, but I do have, not with children, but I will tell you I coach enough people and they're not that much different. <laughs> so um, I have a different parenting situation and our blended family, our eldest is actually OCD with, she could teach this class. So, but I will tell you for my coaching clients, it just comes back to the basics, and it really is making them come up with their priorities. That's the biggest thing. Um, if, if I, and, and that's why I said if you turn this whole session off and you just come up with that, it really is that. Because we're just trying to do too much of the wrong thing sometimes. Do you have a favorite platform for planning your time? So this is what I tell everybody, the one that you'll do. So I use Google. Um, I have people that I work with that do Google with colors. I have people that do a padfolio. And I don't, I'm not, all I care about is that you execute on it. And we're all so unique that it has to be something you believe in. So the other thing too is I tell people, make sure you know who you're, how you're wired. So for me, I'm, I wake up and my brain is, woohoo, let's go. My husband, if, if I told him to get creative first thing in the morning, he would look at me and be like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know? I, don't do that. I don't do that. Like if I, he has a meeting before nine, he's like, who did that to me? <laughs> right? We're up by nine. I'm like, woo, let's go. I've already half an eight done. You know? So understanding yourself and planning it accordingly too. So, yeah. So I'm just a guest here, but I'm kind of curious if everybody's here is uh, real estate investing, is that the rest of everybody? No. No. No? No. 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 It's, uh, it's in general, learning, 85. Oh, okay, yeah. I think it's the board. Yeah. No, there would be a lot more people here because people really like real estate. I, I don't do real estate investing. Oh, no, because I was going to ask if they were, if you, had, if you had some ideas for them as far as how this would be instituted and if you see some of the models, like your real estate investors are on the most recipes. I would I would go back to priorities. Yeah. I think that I mean I don't it whatever engine you're in. Um, I sit I sit with people um, in all industries: financial planning, real estate, insurance, um, title companies, mortgage companies. The number one problem is people aren't prioritized and they don't schedule their priorities. Yeah. Period. Well, and upfront contracts is a big thing too. So upfront contracts just, hey, this is the time that I do this. And we have this amount of time to meet. You know, I know with uh, those of us that are in real estate, we get a call like, woo, let's go. Well, maybe you actually already have that time scheduled and planned. And it's okay to say, hey, I'm not free right now. This is what time I can be there. Or other things with, um, you know, I actually told us to a young man that I'm mentoring. Say, hey, um, on your phone, say, hey, it's after 6 o'clock. I'm going to return your phone call in the morning because out of respect for my family, out of respect for whatever it is. So that's, I mean, to me, that's also part of the time blocking things. Like, this is dedicated time. And there's always opportunity, guys. That's one thing I heard. It's like, well, what about opportunity? It could happen. It always happens. So make sure to dedicate your priorities where they need to be. Uh, one of the things I've learned from some, I stole it from a friend of mine, but I just say I'm already committed to that time. Make it polite. Yes, sir. Do you have uh, exercises to pare down your priorities? Um, so my exercise is literally just sitting down and asking myself what in the fucking business, right? In my business, if I did not do these things, what would shut my doors? Okay, we have a lot of creative marketing ideas, we have a lot of creative things, but what are the things that, and what are the things that if I don't do, my companies die? And I will tell you the common theme there is if I don't build relationships and prospect. Okay, I could shut, I don't advertise, but I could even shut down my marketing and I know if I focused on that alone, I would sustain my business. 
So if all of my time got shrinked out and that's all I had the time for, I know those micro things that I have to do to keep it alive. <coughs> and by the way, I also get to control that behavior, which is what I like. Right. Okay. Oh. Well, mom likes to eat. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so there's I got really good, space. There's some really good foodie places. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's what you do. It really comes to it's I know it sounds almost too simple, right? Right. But it really is. Kids. Thank baby. you. Kids. Baby. All right, thank you. Kids. Thank you. So was that helpful? Yes. Good. All right. Um, so you guys can reach out to Athena. She's uh, online, she's on Facebook, on Instagram, on all those things. Um, she has a phenomenal coaching program, and that's how she makes a living with all the other things that she does. Um, and she got, sugar, she got sugar daddy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and one other thing too, I want you know, I love that you guys have your purpose and your passion, and that I know is what drives me. And you know, it's my family, and then it's my mission for Africa. And you know, one thing is really, I'm gonna share this just with you guys because I have a real heart for Gabriel and uh, that we're doing. And to us, those of us that are in real estate, you know, we make easy money. I mean, it's, you just put the work in, you're gonna make money. And with what they're trying to do, they're trying to go and build a home, it's what, 25,000? Like to have that entire thing built. Walls done, home built, everything. I don't know about y'all, but you know, being in real estate, like, I mean, that's, that's a half a commission check, you know, something that's nice. But I want you guys just to remember that you need to have a purpose and a passion behind what you're doing because getting up in the morning to make money is never a good enough reason to get up and do things. So I think that's probably a really powerful message that you, that you shared and that I know that I share with others. And it will just make you better people. It will make you better people to give out to the world and be able to do things. So, um, you know, we're going to hang out for, uh, I don't know how, what time it is. So we're going to hang out for another half hour, hour. Um, so that we've had this conversation, please reach out, hang out, talk, and there's still some food too. So there's yummy and dessert. Uh, what are those? Mom? Cheesecake tacos. Ah, uh, money. So thank you all for so much for hanging out. Please be.